Hi, so we're going to go ahead and talk about 2D constraints. So I do the drop down here, do part. I'm going to click on start 2D sketch. Now in this case, what I want to do is I want to actually do the XY plane. Okay, so notice that each plane is different XY. It really makes a difference for this for us, which which hopefully you will see in just a second. Okay, the reason why this helps me is that Y is this the on this plane the Y. Um, line here, y-axis is up and down, vertical. x-axis is left to right, which is how we're used to thinking about things. So let's take an example of this line. Okay, I do go ahead and draw that line, right-click, OK. I'm going to also right-click, just for the purpose of this tutorial, right-click and do show all, oops, not snap to grid. I'm going to right-click and do show all constraints. Okay, and I, you do this too, okay? All right, so I went ahead and drew a line. Notice there are no constraints on it, all right? Let's say that I want to make that line horizontal, no matter what, okay? I can go ahead and click that. So now it is it is tied now, and right-click and OK. It's tied to this um, x-axis. It cannot not be vertical or not be uh, um, parallel to the x-axis, okay? If I do another line and I draw it like this, notice that when I get here, see that, see how the, see how when I go just close to the y-axis, there it is. See that little gray box? If I click now, right click OK, notice that Autodesk just applied that for me without me asking to, asking it to, right? It just assumed that I wanted that line to always be um, uh, parallel to the Y axis. Now this is good in a lot of cases because if I would draw a rectangle, then that rectangle is going to act like a rectangle. It's not going to become a parallelogram, right? Um, however, some in some cases it can be very confusing. So for example, a lot of people when they start a drawing go right on this origin. See the origin right there? Click and pull and click. And now right click OK. Alright, then they go back and they're like, well, now I want to move this line. And they try to move it and guess what? One of those points is stuck to the origin. Okay, so that's a constraint that, uh, that Autodesk applied. It. Assume that you wanted it to forever uh, be on the origin. So what we can do uh, is we can actually right click on that and click delete. Okay, and now when I go to move that point, it's fine. It's no longer stuck to the origin, right? It's no longer uh, um, constrained. But notice that once I got close, so if I delete this again, now I can move it around, right? But once I get close, watch what happens. Okay, now in this case, I get close to uh, to the x-axis here. I release it, and it again makes it um, puts adds a constraint to uh, be uh, parallel to the x-axis. Okay, so we just have to understand what's going on, and in most cases, it's helping us out. But when things go kind of weird and kind of wonky, uh, then we need to know what's happening. All right, let's take a look at some of these other constraints. So basically, another one that we have here: if we have two lines, right-click, OK. Line tool, click, move, click, right click, okay. So now we have this line. I've made it kind of weird, right? It's, it doesn't look right, right? Let's say that I want this to always be parallel to this other line. So I can make it parallel, right? That was odd because it should have gone straight, right? Because it's not parallel, right? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do control Z, control Z. Okay, um, that was not parallel. What I did there, I apologize, I, I, uh, I confused the two things, which you will too. Okay, I thought I was clicking parallel. In fact, I was clicking equal length, okay? So equal on lines is going to be equal length. So let's say we want to make them equal length. We click the equal length, click one line, click the other. Click one line, click the other, and now they are equal length, okay? Also, what we can do is we can make them parallel, right? So we can do the parallel constraint. We can click one line, we can click the other, and now they're parallel, all right? Let's say I have a line that I drew kind of like this, right? Click OK. I can do a, um, whoop, I can do a perpendicular constraint, right? So I can click one line, I can click the other. Now notice, the question becomes, what line is going to move? If I click per a perpendicular constraint, I click this line and this line, this line can move, my second line can move, or the first line can move, okay? So, so you'll notice that Inventor has these, these rules, right? So in this case, this line is already tied to um, this other line, right? It's parallel to this other line, which is parallel to the x-axis. So because of that confluence of rules, this line has to move, right? 
Okay, so, so understanding how this stuff interacts is really quite, can become quite complicated. So let's take the case of two other lines, right? So we have one line, we have another line, okay? All right, right click, okay. In this case, when we make them parallel or perpendicular, we click one, we click the other. Notice that it entirely disappeared, okay? <laughs> so I go ahead and click zoom all and notice that essentially what happened was is it made a radius to the circ to this other line and then moved it all the way up here right so i right click okay to get out of the tool and then i can move it down and notice when i move it down it is in fact parallel because it's been constrained to be parallel okay um so um those are some of the basic constraints let's do one last one here that, that tends to be a little bit confusing for people and what we're going to do is we're going to make a circle Okay, right click OK. We're going to make a line. Right click OK. I'm going to click OK. And now we're going to go ahead and make uh, these tangent to each other. So we're going to click the circle. We're going to click the line. And notice now the, um, the circle is tangent to the line. Okay, so we can go ahead and move that and notice it's tangent to the line. All right, finally, if we have two circles, we can have click, drag, click right click OK to get out of the tool. We can also make two circles cocentric. Okay, so we can click first circle, second circle. It will over constrain the set sketch, which is surprising to me. I'm just gonna trust it. Okay, I can also drag and drop it and on the circle and now, does, now notice that when I dragged and dropped it, now they are cocentric, right? So now the points are stuck to each other and they're cocentric. So even though it said it was over constrained, apparently not. So, <laughs> okay, um, that is going to be it for right now. Um, oh, uh, let's see, one last one. So it's going to be collinear, right click, okay, right click, okay, okay. And we can also do collinear, and that's this one. So we can click here, click two lines. And they now occupy the same line, right? So even if I drag them, notice that they stay on the same imaginary line. The two line segments stay on the same line. All right, so that is our introduction to constraints. When we want to not see them anymore, we see too many constraints already, we can go ahead and right click and we can do hide all constraints. And we'll go back to our regular drawing. Okay, so good luck. Practice with constraints.